you some ideas to kick off this morning. Idea number one is this. Stop wishing for less problems and simply get more equipped. Stop wishing for less. I make the mistake of, oh, you did only this, you only that, but that was a, such a victory mentality to have. And then God had shifted the whole thing to be like, okay, listen, stop wishing for this problem because those are going to happen. Get more equipped. I mean, one of the main functions of a pastor, a pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist, is not to grow their own thing, it's to actually equip the saints, to equip the people for their works of ministry so that what can happen, so that we can expand this kingdom on earth through business, through sport, through media, through law, through politics, through all these different avenues until the earth begins to look like where we come from. Mm. Okay. Are you guys on the right side? I'm getting very heated here because, yeah, I'm excited for what God wants to be, uh, you know, be possible inside of you guys here this morning. Last week I was busy driving and the sport again just knocked me big time. And the thought is this inspiration is not enough. Inspiration is not enough. Inspiration is like lighting a match. Oh, but how many of you Brian Masters know if I light the match and just stand here with it, eventually it's gonna dim out, eventually it's gonna you know fade away, it's gonna fizzle, and then that's that I think all of us maybe perhaps at least to some extent that had some party before. And spur, and they bring me like the little sister, right? I'm a sister there, and they're the and they want to say, Baxter, about the song, right? And the kids go, right? They used to me, and then eventually what happens is the fizzles, fizzles, and then it's dead, right? So inspiration is like light in a match. Because the thought I was thinking, this is the premise of the thought and how this whole thing came to pass. I was thinking, how is it possible, all right, in a country of over 80, where 80% of people plus minus claim to be. How do we find ourselves in such a mess? If, they, if people are weekly going to, for example, church meetings, whatever you want to label it as, they go weekly, but there's no transformation that takes place, how is that possible? <clears throat> we sing about how great God is, but there's no, when we treat other people like that, how is that possible to take place? How? How? And this is where the story came from, which is like inspiration is not enough because that's what's happening almost every single week on a weekly basis, 365, right? It's happening weekly. People get inspired. I mean, today you get to click on a you get some type of inspiration, right? You get your inspirational uh, dopamine hit, and you know, it's like it's life and magic. God, but that's not enough. Inspiration must marry education, the right education, the kingdom education. It must marry that. Because that's like when you like the match when you're the bride master, and I'm by, by no means close to being a bride master. I suck at bride. Alright? But my father in law was an absolute champion of both. But eventually, you like the match, that's the inspiration. The inspiration, alright, the match has to hit the fire like that at some point for a beautiful fire to come. Right? And that education, the Bible speaks of it, actually teaches us how to build strong families, how to build strong communities, how to build a strong country. How to build strong businesses. The Bible actually teaches us that. It's found in Proverbs chapter 24. The second verse, and at all time, King Solomon said these words. He said, Through wisdom, a house is built. Through understanding, it is established. And through knowledge, its rooms are full of the rare and precious truth. So there's three components of the idea of how to build a strong family, a strong country, strong, strong communities. Number one, knowledge. Number two, understanding. Number three, wisdom. They all sound, I don't know that they're all the same. They're all completely different. For example, are you guys okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, number one, knowledge. All right. Knowledge, another word for knowledge is information. Information. Okay, but you guys, some of us know inside the show, you can have information and then do anything with the information. All right. So information by itself is not enough, but it's the first piece. It's the first piece to build something worthwhile. Knowledge, get knowledge, but that's not enough. You have to go to the second piece, which is after you get the knowledge, you've got to get what? You've got to get the understanding. Why? Because whenever the purpose of something is not known, abuse is inevitable. Alright? Whenever the purpose of something is not known, you're either going to abuse it or not use it at all. For example, in my case, I never understood the purpose of my physical body, so I abused my physical body. Then I gave my life over to Christ Jesus and the revelation my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God on earth in this vessel. Wow! I can't be putting any type of stuff inside you. I can't be getting drunk every single weekend. I can't be getting high no more because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And once I understood the purpose, everything got transformed within my 
I'll give you a very basic example of this. The other day, my wife and I got these nice little like panini breads or something. And this is my experience, and please forgive my ears, but my experience in the kitchen, so I even got a jam song. Like that's like <laughs> and maybe some spaghetti bolognese and something too good to do with some micro and some tuna and some mayonnaise mixed over and sucks, you know, some cheese or something on top of that sucks. That's kind of like my experience in, in, in the kitchen. So I'm busy there, and I want to make like a peanut butter and jam sandwich or some, some cheese or something on this thing. So I'm standing there, now we've got these, it looks like we murderers there at home. Like we've got these magnets on the wall, we've got these knives, like this kind of knives on the walls, right? So now I feel like I'm doing my kitchen duty, I get this knife off the, off the wall, and now I'm starting to cut. My wife comes in, now she understands the purpose of how all those knives are supposed to work. She walks into the kitchen, and I'm just like, why are you using that knife? That's not the bread knife. Bread knife. Like you must understand, like I came into the marriage with like four plastic bags or black bags or stuff, right? So I'm like, I know a knife is a knife. I don't even know the different, you know, type of knife. I know a steak knife, right? I don't even know it's like a bread knife. So I said, like, you know, why don't you know what you've done? The one Use that one. Yeah, the root. No, 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 I'll take the thing so much easier to calculate. Revolutionary for me. What's the point? Whenever you do not understand the purpose of something, you are bound to abuse it. The Bible, best selling book of all time, was way of the moving forward. Another one of the best selling books of all time is a book by a guy called Rick Warren. And the book's premise was why on earth am I here? People are searching for purpose. Because why? We know that there must be something more than just this mundane day of the day and then wait for my thing. I was sharing with another group the other day. So some people, the only time they're happy is when it's Monday. 